here's our challenge. Here's a worship ministry challenge. And it's this. Second Chronicles 29 says this. The Lord has chosen us to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship. And, and that's, that's mostly what I'll say there, that, that that's our challenge, to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship. And if you've been around for a couple months, you know we've talked about that, and we've kind of broken down what each of those phrases might mean. But I, I just want us to remember that we have a challenge on us to, uh, to use the gifts that God has given us to serve our congregation well by leading worship. This isn't about um, putting on a show. This isn't about me. Uh, in my in my pastoral ability or musical ability, this isn't about you know playing uh, amazing music that people are gonna write home to mom about or ask for CDs about. Listen, we want to have really good music. We want to have really good production. We want to have great singing. Uh, all those things. But our our mission, or I should say, our, our purpose as a worship ministry is to to serve the church body that God has allowed us to be part of and God has called us to be part of. We have gifts. Other people have gifts. They're using their gifts. We have we have gifts in music or in production, and we're just using them to the best of our ability to serve others and facilitate to lead them in worship. That's it. That's very simple. Um, we none of us are, are professional musicians. Maybe maybe one of you are. I don't know. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I, don't, I don't think any of us are. But we just have a gift that God has given us, and we're very grateful for that. But we want to use it to serve Him. We're called to do that, and uh, and so with that, as our team grows and rotates through, you know, week to week, uh, we need to make sure that we're all unified together around the same values or standards. We have that purpose. We want to be unified around that. But if you could break that down, like who are we? Um, what? What makes us up, or what makes us tick, if you will? What what is it that characterizes who we are as a team? Those values or those standards, those those need to be very consistent for all of us. No matter what we're doing on the worship team, uh, we need some values, and and we've talked about those values in the past. But I, I wanted to get them into our minds and into your hands. At some point, we'll hand actually physically hand out a card, and I'll have these values on them. But I want us I want us to know the to hear these to know these, and we're gonna be talking a lot about them, so that we can be ministering and leading through these values with our worship ministry going forward. Uh, these values came from a combination of places, from experiences that I've had, from conversations that I've had, from studying scripture through the years. And so here they are, and there's, there's four of them. And real quick, uh, the first one is this, gospel-centered humility. The first value that we need to have our worship ministry built around is God-centered humility. Hum, or I'm sorry, gospel-centered humility. What does that mean? We are worshipers who have recognized who we used to be in our sin and who we are now in Christ. As teammates, we strive to listen to each other and to defer to one another. We strive to pursue unity, to build up others through encouragement. As musicians and technicians, we work out of praise to God instead of pride for ourselves. As leaders, we lead not from our own strength, but from our weakness and from our God-given capacities. As servants, we surrender our talents. We lay them down to the body of Christ in the same way that others lay down themselves in service to the body of Christ. As those who hold babies in the nursery, those who greet visitors in the lobby, that teach in a group, that stack chairs after service, all those things that we are doing as a church body, we're doing them as servants, surrendering ourselves to uh, to our church family, to our church body. We are not professionals inviting people, inviting a crowd to our concert. We are a family, and, and we are family members of that family, serving our brothers and sisters in Christ, our parents, and our children. Paul reminds us in Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, we have gospel-centered humility. Here's the second value. Here's the second value. Undistracting excellence. Undistracting excellence. We prepare our hearts and our hands and our voices as well as we can because Jesus deserves our best worship and the body of Christ needs our best service. We do it because Jesus deserves our best worship and the body of Christ needs our best service. We come competent and confident in our playing in our singing, in our producing, so that it will be more like worship 
than work. We are aware that audible attributes such as our pitch, our tone, our volume, and physical attributes such as our clothing, the things that we wear, our body language, even our facial expressions, all those things, what is audible, what is physical, what is, what is uh, visible, can impact spiritual moments in our congregations by helping facilitate God-centered corporate worship or, again, by what we sound like and even what we look like, uh, facial expressions, all those things, they can, they can help facilitate God-centered worship or they can distract people from focusing on God. And if you've been around worship services for any length of time, you know what I mean. That somebody can do something, say something, wear something, look a certain way that can either be facilitating, can be helpful, or it can be distracting. And we, of course, want to be helpful. We want to help people focus on God, not distract them. We strive for holiness of character through spiritual disciplines because true outward worship in public can only come from personal worship in private. It must come from within. We strive for diversity in our music, simplicity in our arrangements, singability in our ranges, clarity in our mix, fullness in our volume, and excellence in our performance and production to serve and bless our congregation the best we can. We want to do those things because we want to have undistracting excellence. Heard somebody say not too recently uh, that uh, if Jesus in, if Jesus is in your heart, uh, remind your face uh, if, in the, with the sense of listen. If God's joy is in our life, it's okay to express it. In fact, it's good to express it. If God is in our hearts, then it is good to, for to for our body language to express that. So that leads us to a third value, and that's this expressive authenticity, expressive authenticity. So we are people that have gospel-centered humility. We are a team that has undistracting excellence. That's what we're pursuing. And we have expressive authenticity. That means we do not lead others as people who have arrived spiritually. We're not, we're not at this plane. And so now, hey, you people uh, follow us. No, we are followers of Christ together on the same journey. We're together in this pursuit of God. We're together in this worship of God. We recognize that since our service as worship leaders, as band members, as vocals, even as production team, it's up front or it's out front. People see us in a worship service more than anybody else that's sitting in a, in a seat. Because of that, others are going to look to us as leaders off the platform. When we're in our seats on a week that we're not serving, when we're elsewhere, when we're in the community, we're at a ball game, we're at a restaurant, we're in our home. Others are going to look to us as leaders because they see us as leaders in the worship service. We can't get away from that. Good or bad, that's just how it is. So because of that, we strive to never be fake, but to be the best versions of who God has called us to be. Let's not just get by with that's just how I am. I'm just a, you know, I'm just a sad person. I'm just a... a uh, impatient person. I'm just a temper, you know, I just have a temper. No, let's not just be who we are. Let's be the best versions of, of who we are, meaning who God wants us to be with those, um, with, with showing the fruit of the spirit, not the fruit of our flesh as Galatians five talks about the best version of who God has called us to be. That's who we want to be. Um, we, uh, we want to allow what is in our hearts to come out through our expressions to actually believe the truths that we are presenting for singing about God's faithfulness, that we need to first orient our mind and our hearts around, yeah, I believe in God's faithfulness. Believe the truth before we sing it. We want to be more like lead worshipers than worship leaders. We're, we're setting the example. Our unashamed singing, joyful clapping, sincere smiling, honest praying, Quiet reflection, reverent reading of scripture, all those things that we do up front, it sets an environment for the congregation, our congregation, our, the rest of our church body, who we are part of. Those things that we do, it sets the environment for everybody to celebrate God's goodness, to revere God's holiness, and to rest in God's presence. We've got to remember that. We set the tone. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.12, reminds, Paul reminds Timothy, set the believers Paul, uh, Timothy was a leader in the church. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. Keep a close watch on yourself and on your teaching. And the last one's this, scriptural prominence. What that means is that we use our platform 
as worship leaders, as a band, as production, as vocals, all these all these positions we have. We want to use that platform to point others to Jesus and his finished work on the cross as seen in Scripture. Our goal isn't just to push people to a feeling, isn't just to, to uh, push people to enjoying music. Those, those things are good. Feelings come with it. Hopefully it's good music. Um, it's not just to, to you know press play on a video and enjoy a video or to, to, uh, to see sermon notes on the screen for those that are running the computer. Those All those things, part of what we do. But our, our, our main goal here is to push people toward, use our, use our lives and our service as a platform to point people toward Jesus and his finished work on the cross as seen in Scripture. We emphasize correct biblical doctrine in our services more than musical arrangements and production quality. Okay, the, the, the biblical, correct biblical doctrine is more important. While the emotions that will accompany melodies, chord progressions, and rhythms are enjoyable, they are helpful, they really are, I love it, uh, it is the proclamation of God's word in the lyrics that stirs up true spiritual worship. The, the truth that is in that music is what calls us to repentance, uh, that provides peace in difficult times, that provides memorable doctrine through repetition. Uh, it helps us rem- remember things when we repeat it through music. And, and, it's, and it's that truth that is embedded in the songs and the videos that we play that offers transformation to those who believe. It's that scripture that we are setting up as prominent, not the music, not the videos. Because of the Bible's instruction to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, Colossians 3.16, we will choose songs that are straight from Scripture, sometimes, songs that are to or about God, sometimes, and at times, songs that really just describe our spiritual life and condition. Uh, Songs may be fun. They may be uh, calming. Some songs may be... uh, wordy and and full thick of doctrine um songs may have all kinds of variety of style and volume and and feel and all those things but here's we're we're focused on that those three categories that scripture gives us psalms which are uh songs that are basically straight from scripture hymns which are basically songs that are sung to or about god a hymn isn't what is necessarily in a book uh a, a hymn book, a red book, blue book, green book, whatever. That's not necessarily a hymn. A hymn, by definition, is a song that is sung to or about God. We'll talk about that more in the future. And we're going to sing spiritual songs that, that just describe our spiritual condition. This is who we are in Christ, or uh, this is where we're going one day. I'll fly away, oh glory, whatever. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. But we want to have scriptural prominence as a value. Uh, in our worship ministry. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says this, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the cross. That's why we lift up Jesus in his finished work on the cross and his resurrection constantly. Here's one more. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word of Christ. Music's good. But let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And so if we, as we've said before, the corporate or public worship of God, it's been a part of God's design for humanity from the very beginning. It, it was happening in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden. It's on every page in the Psalms. It's in the Gospels. Uh, according to the book of, Re- of Revelation, it's going to continue forever and ever. God's people have been worshiping Him, praising Him, even through music for a long, long time. We're, that, we didn't create that. We're not the first people to do that. We're not the first church to you know, try a certain song or whatever. None of that is new. However, when we gather together for worship, with our church family on Sunday mornings, uh, we get to, in a fresh way, participate in a tradition that is timeless and that is crucial for us as believers. It's so important what we're doing. It's so important to sing songs to God and about God and about who we are in Christ, reminding ourselves of those doctrines, singing scripture. All that is so important for us as believers to come together even so much more as as the day of judgment uh, approaches, as Paul says. And the methods that we use to do that, the styles, 
they're changing. They've changed. They'll continue to change. We'll change and we'll have variety, all that. Uh, over the la last couple thousand years, all of that's changed. That's, that's good. But the values behind our worship, and the values behind our team must not change. So what are those values again? They are gospel-centered humility. This is what we need to have. Undistracting excellence, expressive authenticity, and scriptural prominence.